Well, hello, welcome back. We are going to learn today how to do some very basic terrain analysis using the DocuForcer plugin. As I mentioned before, you need to download the DocuForcer plugin from Food for Rhino. If you have seen my previous email, I, I explain how to import the DTM from an ASCII and from an XYZ file. Here we're going to use the ASCII. Um, so we use these components, the file path, to define the path, import a C file and then we use the grid shift and then we connect that to the mesh and we use a custom preview I recommend you to use the wireframe preview because the shaded in added some sort of shiny effect we don't we don't like to when we analyze in the uh, terrain so we have here a uh, terrain model with a one pixel resolution so it's very highly high is very highly detailed um, and what we're going to do as a first step, we need to use a filter. So we create the filter because we need to change this resolution, which is really high, um, for the vector generation. Otherwise, we're going to have a vector for each of the pixels that we have here. So if we make it, I will, I will just quickly this, this, so you can see uh, the level of detail. So we're going to have a vector for each of these ones which is very highly detailed for this terrain, which is nearly one kilometer by one kilometer. So we need to reduce that resolution considerably. So the first thing what we're going to do is just define our millimeters, just slightly coarser for not the visualization, but for the generation of the vector. So the first thing we're going to do is the slow vector. So we put the slow, ve slow vectors here. Um, once we have done this, we just connect the shift mesh here, and we can make this connection um, invisible, hidden. Okay. So once we have done this, we can also use the grid smooth, so it will be much softer the representation, and we just connect here the DF. And then we just put number two perhaps in the kernel. This is the, the smoothness by applying a 2D Gaussian convolutional model. Okay, sorry, it's two. So that's what we got here so far. We're not displaying anything because we haven't done anything yet. And then we can connect this grid to the slope. So as you can see, all these appear here randomly in this part of the uh, canvas. So what we need to do is just create a grid point. So we need the grid points from here. Okay, these will be our anchor points and we just need to connect to them as well. So as you can see now, the grid points are depend on this filter and they are up here, here, these anchors. And now what we're gonna do is we need to display this display vector. So we use vector display component and our anchors are our grid points, which is go there. Our slopes are going there. So as you can see, is the slopes showing there. What is the problem here? Um, they are pointing up, so as you can see. Okay, so let me turn off this for a moment. So they are pointing up when they should point down. So we have to reverse them. So there are two options. Here we can right click and use the reverse, so you can see them. That's one mention. Oh, the other is just reverse. And we just reverse our vectors using this extra component. Okay, so now we display. As you can see, the vectors properly displays downhill. Um, and as we move this resolution or this filter, it will increase or decrease. In number and so we don't need a very high otherwise uh, if we decrease considerably this number it will appear to many of these vectors so this is one of the first analysis so let me let me group all of these um, let me move this over here and let me create a group and we're gonna call that um, display slow vectors okay 
After completing the display slow vectors, now I want to show you how to do another of the analysis. This is the shortest part analysis. So for the shortest part analysis, again, we need the docophosphor list. So we can get this from the original list and we can make it hidden as well. Once we've got this, we may need to define first our starting point and our target point. Um, the obstacles in in the map, if it is possible, um, if we have obstacles, we we can use that one zero value, and then we can also put the type of neighborhood calculation. So you can use two eight different numbers of of neighborhood, and finally a factor to multiply high difference. Okay, but let's make it in a simple way. So we need two points. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna create two points and connect it here and I'm gonna define these two points so the two points that I want is one from let's say this point and I'm gonna create a second point over here okay so if you see in the perspective the points are somewhere here I'm just gonna move them up so I, I they can be visible should be visible there okay so it doesn't matter if they are in the surface or not at uh, this point. Um, so I want to find what is the shortest part between these and this position. Okay. So we set one of these points, the initial point, and, uh, and we set the target. Um, sorry. Set one point and we choose in here. Okay, well, we didn't set, sorry. Um, that's it, we set the points. So it's calculating right now. Here it is, so we already have these two. Um, so now what we're gonna do is gonna, here I generated a polyline. So what we need just is to add a curve or a polyline. Um, so this is what we're gonna get. Uh, where appears this is here, is down here. So the curve is not projected in the surface, so we cannot see how it's this happening. So that's what we're going to do is um, now we're going to explode this to get the vertices for the segment. So we just right click there. Uh, we just go to curve. So as you can see, you have obtained different points along the curve or the polyline. So we get the segments. What we can do now is project point and we have these vertices so that's where we're going not good once we got is the direction so we want to project in the set direction so we use, we add a unit set value here and then we need a geometry so the geometry comes from the mesh here so we can connect to the geometry and we can make it also hidden okay okay um once we have done this just let me move it here so now we have the points projected on top of the surface you can see um once we got this we're going to get a set of points and indices what we need is just to again create a polyline poly line and we use here the vertices so what you can see is the polyline here projected now on top of the surface um and this also provides the distance so we know how long it will this is the shortest path between this point and this point and of course you need to create perhaps a, a bridge over here and then if we want to create a distance so we just need a panel to display what is the number what is the distance is 854 meters now, where is the beauty of this work here is that, let's save this, um, if we have here um, different uh, side of uh, grid or type of uh, size of the grid and also the smoothing, uh, this will change. So let's try to reduce our number. So you see that the points will, will be added. And if we reduce also the smooth, then will be different so 
this is considering that it has to go around the portion. So it's not considering that we need to cut. So this is the shortest path in terms of avoiding any sort of obstacles. Now, let's have you seen that changing the size of the grid changes also the distribution. Okay, so this the smaller it is, the perhaps precise is becoming. So you you can change with this and play with these parameters to see how how it's going. Um, this is too short, too small. Now let's move it back again to eleven, and let's see what happens. So you see the calculation varies depending on the sizes of the of the grid. Now um, let's move this to a different location, perhaps. And so you will see how this variable changes. Now let's change also the set value to see how it is affecting the calculation. Uh, it's not affected, in fact. In fact. Um, now what we can do is you can bake this geometry or you can analyze with um, other type of softwares and compare, the other type of plugins, sorry, and compare if this is the shortest distance possible. So these are very basic um, analysis in DocuFoster. Um, in other future um, videos, I'm going to show you how to do um, much um, interesting, more interesting um, analysis with the uh, Bison, which is another uh, plugging. Thank you. That's all for today.